In programming, we have this concept called recursion. So the question is, what is recursion and how does it work? So I think part of the way to explain this is to look at some code. So let's go ahead and create a program and I'm going to call this count. So the main idea with this one is just going to count to 10. So I've got this count and I'm going to edit it with the notepad plus plus. So what happens in recursion is you have a function that calls itself. Typically you divide problems into different areas and each portion is solved by a sub call to itself. So if you were to, for example, sort a list of numbers, you could have two different functions each sort half of that list and then combine the list together to combine results. So we're going to do a simple counting to 10 thing. So count to 10. Again, we count to any number, but I'm just doing that one as count to 10. So it's count, and I'm going to pass in a bunch of extra variables so you can see kind of how things are working. So I'll have a depth, and I'll have my current number, and I'll have my last number that I'm passing into this function. So they can see what's actually going on. So I'm going to have some kind of information about where it's at. So maybe called information. And I want to print out that we call this one. And it is count with these values being passed in so you can see them so let's see so we're passing in a depth a num and a last num so the last is the last one that we're printing out now i want to display the number that's actually being printed so i will display number so it's actually doing something so i do a print statement right here and I'll just indent it a little bit as you can see. And num percent %d. And then I want to actually do what the... Uh, normally in any recursive function you have what's called a base case. So this is the case that doesn't rely on much else. It's kind of like your your case when you know you're done or some way to bail out. So if I'm counting from one to 10, if my number equals my last number, that would be the base case exit scenario. So I do if num is greater than or equal to my last, then I want to just return and leave. Next, we have what is the reductive, um, recursive or inductive case. So recursive slash inductive case. So this base is, is basically what um, what you have when you're you're expanding it out. Um, and so for this particular case when I call it with a number of one and my last number is 10, I'm not quite there. So how do I get to the next step? Well, I could just do a call this, this function again and just have a new depth, add one to the depth, have my number plus one because I'm doing the next number and then have my exit condition last number there as well. So you can see how this is the inductive recursive step. I'm calling myself. I'm updating my depth, updating the number. And then I'm printing out, I'm still adding in this last number so you can see what I'm going to. I'm also going to, when this function completes, print out something similar. So I'll just copy this line right here, down here, and I will do... 
returned. So after this call completes, you'll see returned. And this is interesting because this will give you an idea of what's actually happening. So now I'm going to call this thing. I'll do a call with a depth of 0 and a start of 1, and I'm going to 10. All right. At this point, we're ready to test it and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and get up a terminal, my directory here, and I'm going to run count. And you can see, oops, I need to add some more. After this percent D, I need to have a percent and then my num. All right. I want to actually display the number, not just tell it I'm going to display the number. All right. Everything else looks good. All right. I'll jump back to my code again or to my terminal and run this again. And you can see now I have forgotten to save. That's always good to save your code. Save it. All right. And then I'll run it. And you can see that um, now it displays a depth of zero, the number is one, and ten. So it prints out the number one, and then it calls this count again with a depth of one, the number is two, and it's going to ten. You can see it prints out two, and you can see it kind of goes all the way down until it hits ten. So it prints out the number ten, and then after it prints out the number ten, you can see that each one of these returns one at a time. So we have this, this depth of functions being called, and then they all return. So one of the issues with recursive programs is you can get too deep, and then you can run out of memory and crash. Um, there's a certain depth that goes. Um, lots of other problems. We could try picking a much higher number, uh, maybe a thousand, and see what that does. Let's see if it causes any problems. It seems like it did run into problems at this one right here because the maximum recursion depth was exceeded while calling a Python object. So that's pretty bad right there at 996. So just be careful not to go too deep. Um, this also catches some of your programming errors when you do something wrong. So 1 to 10 is good. Anyway, I hope this gives you a better idea of what recursion might be. Just remember, it's a function calling itself or other functions in some kind of loop thing where you're going deeper into nested function calls.